Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Welcome. What are we doing here? Well, we are going to continue and maybe even finish today building our F-22 Raptor 148 scale by Italeri. Might actually get it finished today. Here we go. Yeehaw. This is what we got going on so far. So, as you can see, I added some decals since last time. And I did some panel line. Lots of panel line work on there since the last time. And this is our almost finished product. So flip her over and you get to see the underside. That's what she's looking like so far. As you might notice from last time, I have installed uh, two of the weapon bay doors, two of the four, and I am ready to put on the other two and actually put the missiles in. So that's what we're going to start off doing, I think. Actually, maybe not. No, we're not going to do that yet. What I need to do is clear coat this thing. This thing does not have any clear coat on it. I put the decals on and I let them dry overnight. And so the decals are all on, all nice and ready to go. So we are ready for a clear coat. Now normally, on the aircraft, I would use a flat clear. But, when you take a look at the F-22 and all the pictures of it and videos of it, the F-22 Raptor is actually quite shiny, if not metallic looking. I've watched videos of guys building models of the F-22 and they like to put down a silver coat of paint as their base coat almost after the primer to try and get that metallic sheen through the paint that you see. As you can see it almost looks kind of shiny just as it is but I need to put a clear coat on there to seal it all in. So I have I don't want to use straight up gloss so I have a semi gloss somewhere over in my little stash so I think I'll use a semi gloss. There it is TS-79. I've even written semi-gloss on there because, well, you need to know. So, let's, uh, let's put some clear on this guy. Seal everything together. Start off with the underside. Why not? So it's a good spot to start, right? utilize my little spinny thing. This is my little spinny thing. So I get to turn that around while I do that. This is one of those instances where a nice thick coat is fine. doesn't matter really. As long as I get full coverage so that the whole thing looks the same. That's the main thing, right? And I think that's good enough. Should be fine. We'll let that sit for a minute. Uh, meanwhile, we have we got the decals put on the tail fins as well. There's none on the inside of them. It's only on the outside, although this one little here just wraps around to the other side. Spads whatever spads is. So, I don't want to lay these down. I could lay them down. It doesn't really matter. Sure, why not? Okay. Well, you know what? I'm going to set up my camera here. I'm neglecting you guys by not letting you see what I'm doing. So, let's make sure how are we looking here? How are we looking here? 
Well, I don't have it very close. There you go. There. Woohoo! Look at that. Looks like an airplane. I'm just going to move that over. And I'll do a clear coat on these guys first. leg anymore. Yeah, let's see. She's looking a little yeah, she's nice and dry. Yeah, and that's what I love about Tamiya paints is they dry so fast. But I didn't do quite a thick enough coat so because I can still see the, the sheen from the, the deco here. So I want to make sure that's covered. So just do a second coat over it. Make sure it's nice and thick to cover the sheen of the decals. Alright. Putting my face pretty close to it so I'm inhaling all the fumes <laughs> not really I don't really want to inhale the fumes but that's just the way it goes sometimes all right now you might be able to see on the camera I might still be able to you can see when I get to right there you can see the, the sheen from the, from the deck wall. When you get a good enough coat on it, that sheen goes away. So, I clearly have to do two coats on it. doesn't matter so much on parts like this where there are no decals, right? It's now got the same kind of sheen or gloss that from this paint to this paint, where before you could tell this was just a little bit shinier than this one, right? So. I'm going to keep these over here just on that side. I know I've painted this side and I've got to flip them over in a couple of minutes. Now I might put a thicker coat on the plane, on the fuselage, so I need to let that dry for a little bit longer. But I can put another coat on my tail fins. There we go, nice and thick. So that's just gonna have to sit and it's just gonna have to wait. I do have a couple of little thin thingies that go on the bottom of the plane. Um, I do have the, what do they call it? The arrestor hook, I think it is, from this thing's landing on a carrier. I don't know if they use them on regular airports or not. Maybe they do, but anyway, in the F2, pardon me, in the F-22, this when this is retracted you don't even see it it's it's not there it's they have actual covers that cover it up so although they have this so i have the option of having it deployed that's what these two little pegs are for they put it in that downward position and you can't even see what i'm doing here um it would be deployed and then it would be in that downward position if this is a plane it'd be like this right okay but i don't need it because I'm not having it deployed, so in the garbage it goes. I have a couple of little covers that they were nice enough to not sculpt properly, and um, so they don't fit in the slot where the where the arrestor hook goes. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for making such precision molds. Um, and making sure that I can't can't put the parts together the way I want to. Um, thanks, Italeri. That's that's friggin' awesome. Ah, <sighs> yeah, that's the way it goes. Okay, so this is now dry enough. I can put a coat on the other side. 
Okay. Not that I really need it. I mean, it's already kind of good enough. But I should have the same gloss on all parts of the plane. Just for continuity. There we go. My tail fins are still nice and wet. This is looking a little bit better now. So that's kind of where we're at. Go to the bottom. It is uh, just a little tiny bit tacky, but that's good enough. I can concentrate on the top half now without danger of ruining anything. So I'm going to move my ends. These are going to go here now, so they're out of my way. I put the paint on these kind of thick, so I need them to just sit and be happy there. While I paint my plane, I'll change the camera for you guys. There we go. Let's just fix my little fin here. Middle a little bit, and we'll go. You might be thinking, "Wow, that's a pretty thick coat that you put on there," and well. You'd be thinking right, that is a pretty thick coat, but that's all right because you have to. <laughs> but it's all now super glossy because it's wet, but it will dry to a semi-gloss and then we'll be done with the painting. Now I'm still not happy with this, I can still see the sheen. So I'm not really happy with that because I could still, let me see if I get the camera to show you. See, it looks more like it's all one piece. I could even do a third coat to try and get that to, to be more continuous in how it's looking. And I might do that. I might do a third coat on these. But then at the same time, these things are at an angle. They sit like this, okay? They literally sit like this on the plane. And so that, this side, isn't visible just by, you know, walking around looking at it. So, I don't know, I'm up in the air. I want to do it, you know, um, but at the same time, I don't care so much. <laughs> that's just my, my kind of little, little bit of OCD. While that's drying, what are we looking at here? We've got our missiles to put on. So once this is dry, that's going to be next. I'm going to put the missiles on. I don't think I'm going to do... You know what I am going to do? I'm going to do a third coat on this. Just because... It's bugging me a little bit. This is dry now. So my elevators are dry. Let's do these again. One more coat. See how it comes out. put back away and that's that so if you're watching this while we're waiting for this why not hit the like button it doesn't cost you anything just hit that little like button give me a thumbs up it helps with my little YouTube algorithm thing you don't have to subscribe but subscribing would be nice too I really appreciate that and I'd also really appreciate it if you went over to my twitch channel which I'll put the descriptions down in the description box. Um, 
of course, I just realized I said description in the description box, and I meant the link down in the description box. So I'll put the link down in the description box for you, and you can go on my Twitch channel, and you can follow me on Twitch, and that would be really great. Um, and then when I go live like this, you can get a little email and say, hey, Duplicitous is live, head on over and watch him and talk to him in the box here and the channel up here and everything. And, and he'd really appreciate that and he would love you for it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's not really much to do other than wait a few minutes for that to dry. And uh, I don't think I'm gonna need much more of a coat on there on the main fuselage part um, it's looking pretty dry now it looks like it may have a bit of shiny in there maybe I do need a little bit more this wing looks good um, yeah the top part maybe could use another coat sure another coat won't hurt right so yeah I'll do another coat. I'll do another coat. I'll do another coat on the top. Meanwhile, these still have to dry. They're still nice and shiny wet. There we go. So let's bring this back over here. You want to see it again? I'll put the camera back, grab my paint. This time I'm going to focus more on the decals and make sure that they're getting the coverage they deserve. <laughs> feather out the rest of it to make sure the coat's even. And that should be it. Okay. Speaking of decals, I want to show you guys some of the decals that came with this kit. They actually gave me decals to put here and here and over this spot here and over this and this thing here. Okay, they gave me decals for all of those, but those parts, they're supposed to be like a panel that has a, a grid over it, right? Hashtag. No, um, it's like a mesh. It's supposed to have a mesh and you're and underneath. And so they give me these decals that are just like a solid color, like a solid dark gray. And I actually put one on and it perfectly matched the dark gray that I used. And you can't even see the decal. In fact, I do have one on there right now, um, right here. This little spot right here um, is a little warning. It's a warning decal of something like kerosene. Um, I think it's just kerosene. You can actually read it. It's, it's clear enough to read. I just have to take my glasses off to read it. I can't read it now because of the paint. Um, so, so much for that. I tried, guys, I tried. But it says something like kerosene release or something like that um or vent kerosene fume vent or something anyway that's what the little little doink on the top of the of the, of the fuselage there in the middle is supposed to be for but anyway um that's what that is and so they put that there and it's like i can't even really tell that there's a decal there um because it's it just blends in with the color it's like almost the exact same color um, so if you're not using um, Gunship Gray 2 AS27, if you're not using that color, you probably not have a problem. 
but this color matches the dark gray on the decals absolutely perfectly. And so the decals just kind of disappear and you don't even get to see them. So that's, uh, yeah, that's that. So I'm really tempted. I really want to continue on this, but I have to wait. And uh, I have to wait. Eventually. We're still just a little bit tacky, but I think we're good. I think we're good. All right, so I'm gonna move these out of my way because I gotta move, flip this thing over and I gotta put the missiles on. So, flip. So, the missiles are already on these little pods. You could have put your choice, really. Put the pods in there first, these little, I don't know, I'm calling them pods, but these little bracket things, um, arms. You could put those on first and then put the missile on. That's that's up to you. I don't think it makes much of a difference. I, however, I'm going to, obviously, I put them on the missile first just for my own little thing to get them in there. And then, hopefully, without much difficulty, find the holes line them up straight and do that. So let's put the first, first one in. Careful, I don't want to ruin that. All right. So first one, get some glue. I want it where it's supposed to be. So I'm going to have to hold this like this for a second. I think that ought to do it. Are one and done. So if I tip this now, it just so happens that this fin at the back here just touches where the door is right there. And so even if I do this, it's not going, it's going to hold it there. So that's going to be fine. We'll see if we have that same thing on this side. So where did my other missile go? There he is. And so we're going to line this up. It is flush and pretty much the same. It's not quite, it's like I want to say it's half a millimeter away from touching the, the actual bay door on there. But that's it. So now our missiles are mounted, and so we just have to put in the, the other two doors. Okay, so we'll go back to this side so that I'm not in danger of touching that one. So these guys, where do they go? If that's open. That's going to be for that side, okay. 
there are definite lefts and rights when it comes to this. So it's just these little five things, and all they do is this kind of hook into the plastic. There's no indents or anything or any kind of a guide to actually get them in there. It's literally just, yeah, I kind of put it there and that's where it is. Like that. Okay. It's really, it's not the best system. And there is a little bit of guesswork to it. Of course, it doesn't quite line up perfectly. So once I let it set for just a few seconds, and I know it's not going to fall off on me. Kind of, I see it still, it doesn't want to sit. Some kind of glue that would cure a little faster might be better. Another thing that helps is to tip this up so that you can get it to not want to close on you so fast. So leave that for a minute or two. Another thing you could do is put a little bit of tape and if you're confident in doing the tape thing. Now one thing I want to try and do, you know, what you might want to do, is try and have the doors open at a 90 degree angle to this panel right here, to, or to this panel. You want to have them open to a 90 degree. That's about how much they open. They don't flap open like super crazy amount. Just like 90 degrees and that's all they do. So what I did with the other ones is I actually let that sit. Um, I leaned it up like this against my little footstool there for about 10-15 minutes just to make sure that glue is set for that. I'm not going to do that to you guys because you want to see it finished, right? I'll even turn it towards you so you can see. There you go. You can see the angle of that bottom door, uh, this guy here is now in place and I'm going to do the same for the other side. I just need to wait a minute or five for that to actually set. Now you can use crazy glue, sure you can use crazy glue and it's set and done, right? Set it and forget it just like old George Foreman. But was it George Foreman that, that was the slogan for? I don't remember now. <laughs> I thought, I think George Foreman did the set it and forget it, didn't he? Anyway, so I might be able to get away with doing this now. Let's put it back down. I'll keep an eye on it and make sure it doesn't fall over. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold it like that and I'm going to get the thin set. Why do I get the thin set? Because the thin set does tend to dry a little bit faster. And so I can add a little bit of a thin set to each one of these. Just to ensure that it's all glued together. And that's pretty good. Okay. So. Let's start working on the other side. Let's start working on the other side. Set it on the gin ever so gently. Okay, so same deal, different side.
gonna hold it still and let it sit for five seconds or so. And that's what we're gonna do. Does my face look pink? I'm very warm right now. My face looks a little more pink than usual. It's because it is very warm in my room. And I only have one fan going. All right, so I have this one actually open a little too much. Just want to relax that opening a little bit to match the other side. Okay, once again, just gonna leave it like that and wait a minute or two and let her set. So I will say, this kit hasn't turned out too bad. Um, the final result of this, it's not bad. I still don't recommend it though. Um, there's much easier, nicer kits out there on the market. Um, at the moment, I can only recommend the Hasegawa one because it's the only one I've, I've built. Um, I would never even consider the Ravel kit, ever. And, yeah, I just would not recommend it. I wouldn't even buy it. I wouldn't waste my money on the Ravel version of this plane. Okay, now, unfortunately, with those on there, they actually sit down just a little bit lower than the fuselage. So, I can't really, as you can see, if I get the angle right, right there, you can see they stick down just a little bit lower this camera which actually is in focus you can see they stick down just a little bit lower and also as you can see so I tried to get them opened pretty close to 90 degrees on each side um, in comparison to the angle of the, the intake there right it's so pretty close to 90 degrees maybe not quite but I think it's close enough considering they have no arms to attach or anything like that um, it's not bad, and they're pretty close, oh, this one kind of hang open, hung open just a little bit further. And that one down just a little bit more, just to get it a little bit more realistic. There we go, okay. So. So I have to keep this upside down now until I'm ready to actually display it. But I can put my elevators on. They just simply go in there. So that'll be easy enough. On the Hasegawa kit, um, the elevators are movable. So you can position them anywhere, anywhere you like. And so that's a nice bonus. out 
always the case. You know, once you actually have the glue on there, now they become difficult to put on. Okay, so how are we looking here? They look pretty level, so that's pretty good. So that's that. These still they almost touch. If this one goes fine. This one, this one actually hits the freaking fin. stand that I plan on displaying this thing on. So I already have the cutout for this guy. I think I showed you guys this already. I cut that out so that will go there like that. Okay. Now I'm going to grab my stand. So I have to go away from the camera for a moment while I go grab it. guy. I bought this actually to, it's like, it's not a Bandai product, but I bought it to use as a potential display for a Gundam kit. And so it's just kind of been sitting there, because I don't have any um, Gundam kits right now that really need a stand. So, let's just put this on here. Like that. Let's turn it around. Should turn? No? Does it want to turn? Okay. There we go. There we go. <laughs> so that'll work. Let's, uh, I'm actually going to take it and level. Stay. Yep. Cool. All right. Okay. So my tail fins right here. Woohoo. Where'd they go? They're right here. Okay. So I have test fit these before couple of times now. One fits fantastic, the other not quite so much. So, but that's quite all right. Leave my glasses off so that I can see. See, this one fits perfectly. No problem whatsoever. And it's got no problem staying where it belongs. Just like that. This other one, though, I'm going to have to find a middle-of-the-ground compromise to get it to stay where it's supposed to. I do want to add a little more glue to this, though. Just to... sure it is going to stay put. Okay, I'm happy with that. It's this side, I believe it was. I had to trim down the thing, and then when I finally got it to go in there, it kind of sits, it's got some play in it. And neither side of this, neither side matches the contour of the plane itself. So I kind of just have to find the happy medium in between and do that. And that really kind of sucks. So because of that, 
and put on a little extra glue. And then we're going to find our medium here. I think I'm just holding it right where it needs to be. You can see it wants to flop a little too far over. So, I'm going to hold it like that until that glue kind of sets a little bit. And then hopefully, the thin set will find where it's connecting. Inside or outside or wherever it might be. Stay. This is one piece I might wind up taping if it doesn't stay when I let go. I'm kind of hoping it's going to stay on its own. Three, two, one. And it fell over. Oh, even worse. Well, at least my missile stayed intact. Okay, this actually came apart. You can't even really see one little spot there, one little spot there where it was making contact, and of course it will. Try this again. Simply just let that sit <laughs> and we're done. Well, no, we're not done. We gotta put the canopy on. Doo -doo -doo. My gross. Open. What did I do? Well, everything stayed on. Not this, though. That's gonna come off. <sighs> what did I do? It looks like I accidentally opened up a second window. Still alive? <laughs> my, it hit my mouse. My mouse did something. And now this is all coming apart, and I'm not sure. This has to go like this. Once my glue is dry, I clearly need to work on this. This is why you don't buy aftermarket products. Buy original, buy official Bandai stuff. Okay, guys? Buy Bandai products. These screws are supposed to be holding this together. Does it look like it's holding it? Has it fallen apart on me three times? Yes and yes. So clearly it needs improvement. And 
It's all because I don't want to rest it on these things. And this is now loose, so I might as well just freaking pull it right off and re-glue it. Again, you know, do that. Okay, turn it like this for the canopy. And the canopy is going to go on like that. Just like that. My nice golden canopy. <laughs> oh man. But there's not anything I can do about it. Somebody had suggested maybe getting on, contacting a tallery to see if they'd send me one. Or maybe somebody who is otherwise throwing this kit away. But you know what? It kind of is what it is. And it's not the end of the world. that the canopy is turned out like this. I'm not sure where it's at, but it's making contact in the back or if it is. So just do that. And there we go. So she's done. That is the end of the Atelier F22 Raptor. Just like that. She's done. So, raise these up, make it look like it's doing something. I'm actually going to have it kind of displayed like this. I think it's a good, good angle, so it's like it's elevated. It's flying. I would, if I could have it kind of tilted on an angle a little bit, I think that would be cool. But this particular setup doesn't allow for that. But that's okay. So that's it, guys. We're done. Finished. Completed. Yeah. And so there you have it. So I'm going to take some pictures of this once this is dried and let it sit for a good 20 minutes or so and I'll take some pictures and then I will upload the pictures up onto my Instagram and you guys can check those out there if you want to get some nice, uh, oh, just clearer pictures than what these cameras do for you, right? And uh, yeah, so that's going to be it for today, guys. My next build is going to be a gun, another Gundam. Now I noticed that my I went on my YouTube channel, checked out my analytics and all that stuff. My Gundam builds get the lowest views. And I'd like to know why. I'd like to get some feedback, some input. Why are my Gundam builds getting the lowest amount of views? Is it because they're not custom painting? Is it because there's so much cleanup to do on it and it's boring to watch? What is it about the Gundams that's not um, not popular as far as my views? I know there's over 220 of you guys watching my stuff. I'm interested to know what what is it? Is it just because you guys are interested in airplanes and things like that and not Gundams? Or, or what? Maybe I just need to try and find a, a Gundam crowd. <laughs> anyway, that's, that'll be for another time. My next build is going to be a Gundam. If you want to watch it, that's great. I'd love it. Um, but if you don't, then that's your thing, right? That's the power of the internet. If you don't want to watch it, you don't have to. Anyway, I'm going to call it a day, guys. That's it for now. So, 
thanks for watching thanks for coming out you guys you leave the positive comments and encouraging me on this um, that is really great that really helps out thank you so much guys um, yeah so that's about it um, we are done and so I might actually get to start on that Gundam kit tomorrow I'm not sure but anyway I'm gonna leave it at that we are done for the day um, I'm going to remind you guys to head on over to my Twitch channel and follow me on Twitch. Please follow me on Twitch. <laughs> I bug you guys on every video I know. Um, but, yeah, hit that like button, follow me, subscribe, all that good stuff. But until then, guys, we'll see you all in the next one. Thanks again.